Hello! In this video, we'll be taking a look at getting started with GNAT Test. The AdaCore GNAT Pro Tool Suite contains many software engineering tools. GNAT Test is one of them. It's AdaCore's unit test framework generator. With GNAT Test, you can manage a suite of unit tests that ebb and flow with the development of your application. And it's not just an interactive tool. You can integrate GNAT Test with your development process, whether you have a custom infrastructure or use a COTS solution like Jenkins CI. Documentation for GNAT Test can be found in the GNAT User's Guide for Native Platforms. Look under the GNAT Utility Program section, and you'll find info for the Unit Test Generator. When you first invoke GNAT Test, the system analyzes your code and creates a testing framework. The framework is tailored precisely to the packages, procedures, and functions that GNAT Test sees. Subsequent invocations of GNAT Test will maintain that framework so that your testing is synchronized with changes in your project. So as your code evolves, so will the testing framework. The testing framework consists of a test harness and unit test skeletons. Once the testing framework is built, it is up to the test developer to populate those empty test skeletons with unit test code to exercise the code under test. Your testing code will be preserved even when GNAT test makes changes to the testing framework. Underneath the hood, GNAT test makes use of the AUnit Ada Unit testing library. AUnit provides a very powerful, flexible, expressive set of types and operations for organizing and invoking unit tests, but it leaves the organizational work to the user. This is where GNAT test steps in. For every package visible in the code under test, GNAT test generates an AUnit test fixture. This test fixture, in turn, contains one or more AUnit test cases. In the simple case, one test is generated for every visible subprogram in the package. Let's take a look at actually using GNAT Test. What you're seeing now is AdaCore's newly rebranded GNAT Studio IDE. It's got the look and feel of GPS, but the new GNAT Studio has a new language intelligence engine, improved stability, and other improved internal systems. GNAT Test needs, at minimum, something available to test some visible subprogram. Any unit that exists in a package spec, whether in the public part or in the private part, will be picked up by GNAT test. So in the project here, we have a package containing a function that performs some mathematical process on its argument and then returns a result. To invoke GNAT test, all we need to do is to go to Analyze, GNAT test, Generate Unit Test Setup. There are a handful of knobs you could adjust here. You can specify the location on your file system for different components of that test suite you're about to generate. You can also provide options that adjust the behavior of GNAT test. For now, we're going to go with defaults and hit execute. GNAT test generates a new project containing the testing framework and then switches to that harness project. Switching between the code under test and the harness project is very quick and easy. To exit the harness project, go to Analyze, GNAT Test, Exit from Harness Project. This puts you back in your regular project. To go back to your test suite, use Analyze, GNAT Test, Open Harness Project. At this point, GNAT Test has created the entire testing framework necessary for exercising all the code under test that we've shown it. We can build the test suite the way we build anything in any other project by going to Build, Project, Main File, which in our case is testrunner.adb. This creates a binary executable called testrunner, which contains the code under test along with the testing harness, the unit tests themselves, and reporting infrastructure. Invoking the testrunner executable is how we run the test suite. In GNAT Studio, it's almost like running a regular executable. You go to Build, Run, Test Runner. The difference with this particular executable is that GNAT Studio knows that this is a GNAT test test suite. So if we execute this, we'll see that GNAT Studio interprets the test suite output and shows a failed test. The test failure message says that the test was not implemented. 
Clicking on the first line gets us to the line of code under test, and clicking on the second line shows us the unit test code. Another way to navigate between the code under test and the test case is by double-clicking on the items in the tests view towards the left of your GNAT Studio window. So, we had built the test harness earlier, but we never added any unit test code, and the default in GNAT test is to set tests to fail by default. You can see here that GNAT test has inserted comments describing where we are expected to make modifications and regions we shouldn't touch. GNAT Studio highlights those read-only regions of the source file, making it easy to see where we should add our unit test. So let's add the unit test code that exercises our unit under test. Our function implements a cube. So we'll create an array of interesting values that exercise a few cases and loop through that array using an ADA 2012 iteration scheme uh, for items of our array, we'll compare f of x to our expected result. Each time we iterate, we'll invoke our function under test and compare its results to our expected value. aUnit.assertions.assert is a procedure that accepts a Boolean argument and a failure explanation string. If an assertion ever fails, the corresponding test case is immediately aborted with a failure, and the report will contain this string argument. This assertion shouldn't fail, however. Now we'll hit F4 to rebuild our test suite. Then we invoke build, run, test runner, and we can see now our unit test passes. What happens if you change your code? First, let's exit the harness project. Now let's add a new function g just after function f, which will perform a square root rather than a cube on its argument. The implementation of G employs a square root function available in Ada Numeric's generic elementary functions, which will instantiate with our local number type. To refresh the testing framework, we just need to invoke GNAT test again. So we'll go to Analyze, GNAT test, Generate Unit Test Setup. We'll click Execute, and now we're back in a freshly remodeled harness project. We can ask GNAT Studio to show us tests that haven't been implemented by going to Analyze, GNAT Test, Show Not Implemented Tests, and the IDE will point to our new function. We can right-click on G, go to GNAT Test, go to Test Case, and start populating this test case with unit testing code. Rebuilding and rerunning the test suite shows us passing results. Now what happens if we remove a unit from the spec? Let's remove the line. And then we'll exit from the harness project, rebuild the harness, and take a look at the result. As you can see, GNAT test disables the test case, but preserves your unit test code by commenting it out. And if you reinstate that line, GNAT test will resurrect the test. So far, we've been using a very simple example so that we could clearly present basic GNAT test operation. GNAT test is able to scale to work with much larger programs using many more language features. So in the next segment, we'll see how GNAT test tests code that uses ADA features like generics and object-oriented programming with tag types. We'll also explore how ADA 2012 aspects in source code can be used to direct GNAT tests test harness generation. When testing most real-world code, isolating the code under test by stubbing out its dependencies is often necessary. We'll show you how to use GNAT tests stubbing capabilities. And finally, GNAT tests command line interface facilitates integration with your existing engineering processes. We'll go over how GNAT test can integrate with external software engineering tools such as version control and continuous integration systems like Jenkins CI. So basic usage of GNAT test from GNAT Studio is pretty easy. Creating a test harness, switching between working on the code under test and the test harness project, and writing test cases is straightforward. As your code changes, GNAT test will keep up by maintaining the testing harness to match your code. Give this a shot and stay tuned for more on how to use GNAT test in more complex ways in the next part of the series.